Hey everyone, it's Joe. We're live again, trying something new today. We're actually on the computer on my desktop tonight. So I just found out you can actually do it from your desktop up until now. Facebook Live has been predominantly done through your smartphone. So trying to keep up with the technology here. So if you're here, um, I definitely want you to say hello as usual. Um, again, I'm working out the bugs, trying to figure out all this modern technology. So if you're here, definitely say hello. Um, I see Galaxy is here, which is awesome. Hey, Gail, love to see you, glad you're here. Um, if you hear me, everything's coming through. Um, just say hi. Uh, those of you who are joining in, tell me where you're from. Say hello, let me know what the weather's like. If you're by the beach, tell me <laughs> what the weather's like. Tell me if you've got a drink in your hand, what you're drinking. There's Helene here. Hey, Helene, again, great to see you all. Um, I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, I know sometimes I get on and I'm like, I'm, I'm going a mile a minute here. It's just because I really, really look forward to these moments. I really, really look forward to connecting with you and sharing some of the things that I've learned in my journey that has helped me create this amazing relationship. And as always, that's my intention for you, for everybody watching this live or via the replay, or for everyone who's just at that point in their life where they're looking for a good man and a great relationship. Uh, so I see Helene's from DC. Uh, it's nice where it's rain, have the seltzer, man. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Helene. Um, and again, Sharzad, great, well, great weather. When is it not great weather in San Diego? You know, I have some friends out there and I'm so jealous because it's always like, you know, 75, 80, beautifully sunny and warm, no rain. It's like, it's, it sounds like heaven on earth. So um, my hat goes out to you for living out there. <laughs> Someday, somehow, I'm going to get to warm weather where, where my goal, my intention is to wear shorts every day because I just love the summertime. But, you know, when you have kids and you've got family, it's not that easy just to pick up and move. So, you know, that's my prayer. That's my intention for somewhere down the road. Uh, so Galaxy's got a protein drink in our hand. Absolutely love it. So um, we're just going to give a couple people a little bit longer to um, to jump in because invariably there are some people who, like me, are technologically challenged and they have trouble trying to figure things out and sometimes there's lags and there's delay and you know the internet gremlins are rearing their ugly head so i see our friend kansas has jumped in from seattle maya from santa fe hey maya good to see you glad you could be here um so again those of you who are who are jumping in say hello you've said hello already um hit the like button send some hearts let me know that you're there interact if you have any questions you know one of the reasons why I like this forum is because it allows you to ask questions versus me just, you know, throwing a lot of information at you. And it gets, you know, we get to engage, we get to connect with each other. And, you know, in whatever way I can, I'll offer you some guidance and assistance. So it's a great forum to be able to do that. So looks like, you know, some couple minutes have gone on, people have joined in. So we're just going to go ahead and, and jump right into it. So I always start off with my intention, like, why Why are we talking about this tonight? So, because my mind is constantly going and I constantly get insights in the shower. I don't know why, but it's one of the best places where I receive what I call these universal downloads where I'm just there and it's kind of like the universe says, you know what, you need to kind of talk about this. You need to address this. And I'm always looking for ways and thinking about ways. How can I connect on a deeper level? How can I really help these people? And again, I always share the story is that if you imagine you were, in a part of the world, a remote part of the world where everybody in your village was dying from dehydration. And you figured out that th there was this well where there was enough water for everybody in your village to drink it and they would never, there would never be a shortage. You would kind of feel that it was your moral obligation. It was your moral duty to share what you've learned with others so that they could have that word, so that they could be satisfied, so that they could be filled and that they could never suffer from their malady again. And, and that's really why I feel the way I do is that, you know, I was fortunate to figure this whole love thing out um, through the school of hard knocks, through the hard way, and through a lot of due diligence and a lot of stubbornness that I was able to kind of crack the code and, and figure it all out. And what we're talking about today is that, you know, you're a good person, right? If you feel that you're a good person, you know that when you love, you love with all your heart, like you're all in, you've been saying prayers, you've been asking for guidance, you've been saying, 
you've been questioning to yourself, why is it that this other woman who you know doesn't have as much to offer as you, right? And yet you see her walking hand in hand with somebody who loves her. And if you're honest, that gets to you, right? And if you're from the East Coast, New York, it, it even burns you a little bit, right? So if, if you feel that way, you know, if it burns you, if it upsets you, if if it just pushes your buttons just a little bit, just go ahead and, and you know and, and hit the like button. Again, we're all just being real here. We're all just being honest. And you know, just go ahead and, and just share. Because the reason I'm having you do that is because we're all at points in our journey where, and you know, thank you, I see the likes coming through, where it's like, you know what, why? Why why not me? You know, I Natalie and I talk all the time about, you know, when we were single and, you know, we had date night on Friday and we're just there and we're, we're talking about our lives and, and reminiscing about those times where we were single and, and going through our stuff. And now a lot of it just becomes funny stories because we're, we're in the relationship that we, we both always wanted. But we go back to that time and like, you know, Natalie always used to say, like, why? Why would God deny me? Like, I'm a good person. I have a lot to offer. Why, why would God deny me? And I'm going to share, you know, I've shared in some of my other videos, you know, my beliefs. And again, they're my beliefs. I'm not saying they should be your beliefs, but to help you understand what I've learned in my journey in my 50 years on this planet. So I don't believe in a God that arbitrarily picks and chooses who finds love and who doesn't. I don't believe in a God who arbitrarily picks and chooses who is financially successful and who isn't. I don't believe in a God who arbitrarily picks and chooses who's healthy and who's not. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes there are things that happen that make it hard for our human minds to comprehend, but I truly believe that there is rhyme and reason to life and how things work. And very often in our love life, things happen a certain way. So I was in the shower and one of the downloads I received was kind of like, you need to talk about why some people pray and ask for guidance, but they don't receive the answers that they think they're supposed to get. So a lot of us have brought up to, if you've grown up in a certain faith or a certain belief system or a certain religion are taught to believe, you know, ask and ye shall receive. Now I believe that ask and ye shall, ye shall receive, but I believe that's only one part of the equation. I also believe there's another part of the equation called the law of Goya. Now, for those of you who haven't heard it, Goya is G-O-Y-A, and it stands for get off your A-S-S, -S, okay? And you know I'm from Jersey, so I'm just going to say, so get off your ass. So I believe that one of my favorite expressions is that God can't do your push-ups for you. You could pray and you can ask, but there are things that you need to do that you must do in order to receive what it is you're asking for. Now, those of you who know know that I'm big into studying life, quantum physics, the world, and the energy of how life works. And what I've learned is that life is all about energy in every aspect of our life. And when we put out certain energy into the world, ultimately, the energy we put out comes back to us. Now, that doesn't mean that you have a good day. Like you have 99 bad days and all of a sudden that you're grateful for what you have or you say some prayers or you go to church and light a candle, that all of a sudden you're going to get what you receive. It, it's not how it works. So when we're talking about the energy that you're putting out, what we're talking about is the predominant energy. And there are three areas. Okay? There are your thoughts, your words, and your actions. And so when you consistently, and the key word is consistently put out thoughts, words and energies at a higher level in a, in a way that's congruent and in alignment with what it is you desire, well, that's when your prayers get answered. So let me give you an example. Those of you who know me and my story know that I was engaged to a woman and we were in a relationship for about three years. Now, during that time, the energy that I was operating from, to be quite honest, was very low. I was in that relationship from a place of fear. You know, in life, basically, we operate from one of two energy levels. We operate from a place of love, strength, and power, 
which is who we really are. It's, it's our true authentic self. And we also operate from a fearful, low energy place. And quite honestly, I was in that relationship from a place of fear. I was afraid I was never going to have the love I really wanted. I was afraid that I was never going to get married and have a son because those of you who know my story as well know that my dad died when I was 15 years old and I had a wonderful relationship with my dad. And when he passed, there was a huge hole. There was a huge void in my life. And so ultimately, my best memories, some of my best memories were being around my dad and having that father-son relationship that we had. Now, it doesn't mean that it was always sunshine and rainbows. There were, you know, he was a strict, old-fashioned Italian guy in many ways. Didn't take any bullshit whatsoever. And there was like a line. If I crossed that line, you know, these were the days where you, you got your ass handed to you. It wasn't like my dad sat down and said, okay, son, well, let's talk about the effects of your behavior. And how can I can love and serve you better as a parent and guide you on your journey? It was like, you don't do that shit. <laughs> and, you know, you don't do that shit and smack. So that's just how it was back in the day. and. So I'm just trying to be honest and transparent. But that didn't mean that after he kicked my ass, he didn't sit down and say, look, son, do you know why I kicked your ass? Okay. Because the way you acted is unacceptable. Okay. Could he have done it a lot better? Yes. And I tried to learn from that model and to use that way of being with my boys so I never have to kick their ass in that way, even though there's been many times where I felt like it. And those of you who are parents can relate to that. But we were at that point in the journey where I realized that there was a different way of doing things. And so it's a matter of getting back. And, and I got to apologize. I just had some brain flatulence. I was going one, one way and all of a sudden I got completely distracted and I got off point. So, um, so let's, let's get back on point. So what it really comes down to is you operating at a certain energy. And when you operate at that energy in your thoughts, your words, and your actions, you put yourself in alignment for the universe, for God, divine source, whatever you call it, to send what you're looking for. Oh, got back on track. So I was talking about my ex-fiance. That's why I was sharing about my story with my dad. So my energy was really low. It was really in a low vibrational place. And there's actually a study. And you know what? I'll just make a note. Um, tomorrow on the, on the page, I'll put put an energy chart from the Omega Institute. And it talks about really the energy of our emotions, the energy of our feelings. And when we operate at a really low vibrational energy, that's things like fear, anger, frustration. And when you're at a really high energy, and actually they actually quantify these energy levels like through frequencies. And what you're, when you're at a really high energy level, like love, like contribution, then you're like anywhere from five to 700. So honestly, with my ex-fiance, I was really, really low, which is why I attracted a really low toilet bowl, crappy relationship. Then after that, I was just like, you know what? I don't want that experience ever again. I wish I had what I'm sharing with you today. And I wish I had a mechanism to make the changes, but it's not true. I just realized I was that unhappy in that relationship and I didn't like the way it felt that I never wanted to do that again. Never want to be in that kind of relationship again. Now, for those of you who have been there, done that, who have said, you know what? I'm done. I never want another one of those crappy relationships again. If I can't have the kind of relationship that I truly desire in my heart, then I'd rather be single and alone. If you're at that point in your journey, go ahead and hit those like buttons right now, because that's really who we want to engage in this community. If you're at that point in your life where you're just look, you're so desperate, you're so needy, you want any guy and you'll take any guy who will come along, who will pay attention to you and treat you like a convenience just so you can settle for crumbs, then I'm going to be quite honest. GPS for love is not for you. Okay? So if you're following here, then just like kind of unfollow. If you're, following us on through my website and through the YouTube channel, then please don't watch. I, I'm not here to tell you, I'm not one of these people to say to help you catch a guy. Okay. That's not my goal. That's my, not my intention. My goal, my intention is to help you attract the right guy and to be the person so that when that guy comes along, he says, you know what, this woman's different. This woman's better than any other woman I've ever 
ever interacted with in my life. And even though there's a lot of other women who may look better out there, that I'm not going to let this woman get away because doing so would be the dumbest thing in my life. You know, that's why I try to be transparent. That's the way I feel about Natalie. And on my children's lives, that is my truth. And that's how the right man is going to feel about you when you show up in his life and you show up in that high vibrational energy way, in your thoughts, in your words, and your actions. And so you need to understand that in order for you to attract the love that you want, in order for you to, for God to answer your prayers, universe, divine source, whatever you call, then you can't be here. You need to be here. Now, how do you do that? That's the big key. The key is for you consistently to be in an energy where your thoughts, words, and actions are in alignment with what it is you say you desire. That's why being clear is so important. For me, that's where my checklist for love came in, where I got so clear. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life with someone, what is it that I need from my partner? What are those important qualities and characteristics? And I said, okay, this is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. And I, everything that I thought, everything that I said, and everything that I did, my thoughts, my words, and my actions were in alignment with what it is I said I desired. And when I started doing that consistently, not just for a day, just not for a week, but a couple of weeks and a couple of months, a few months later, that's when Natalie magically appeared in my life. Now, I'm here to share this with you is because the reason why most prayers go unanswered is because most people say, God, send me the love of my life. Send me that amazing man that I can share my life with. And then what happens is you go after a guy who's really hot, but who has the personality of a wet mop. You go after a guy where there's great chemistry, but there's crappy compatibility. You go after a guy and you're in a relationship where you know you're not being loved, honored, and respected, but you stay and you choose to stay and you say you're done and you walk away and then you keep going back. See, so you're saying one thing and you're doing another. See, that's an incongruency. That's when God says, well, make up your freaking mind. Like you say you want a good man, you say you deserve love, yet you settle for crumbs. So God says, I can't send you what you want because you're not, your energy is not in alignment with what you desire. So, and this is what I believe is that ultimately God, universe, created this energy system that just works a certain way. And it doesn't arbitrarily pick and choose what happens to who. If you are in alignment in your thoughts, words, and your actions with what it is you say you desire, it will send you what you desire. If you're not, it won't. If there's an inner conflict, you're saying one thing and doing another, well, therefore, you don't get what you want because your energy is not in alignment with what you, what you desire. So the reason why you're not getting the love you're looking for is probably because your energy, your thoughts, your consistent thoughts, words, and actions are not in alignment with what you say you desire. Now, if you are, if your thoughts, words, and actions are all in alignment with what it is you say you desire, and you're putting yourself out there, and you're enjoying yourself, and you're showing up as this awesome, amazing woman, your true, authentic self, then what's happening is that God, universe, divine source, is moving some things around behind the scenes to prepare you for, to receive what it is you desire. Again, when I made that change and I was like, you know what, I'm done with those crappy toilet bowl relationships and I'm never going to settle again, I still dated. I still got, you know, was dating someone and realized that, you know what, mm, this relationship isn't going to lead to what I want. So I've got to walk away and I've walked away. There are other relationships where, well, I don't know. And that old fearful part of me came back and I stayed with someone for a little while and it, ultimately got to the point where, you know what, no, this isn't, this is going to be the same thing. This is not going to be the relationship. And it took me a little longer to get to that decision, to make that, to realize that, you know what, I've got to walk away. And once I got to the point where I was like, you know what, this is it. It's give me the great or nothing at all. Where I'm willing to give up the good to go for the great. When I got to that point, 
within a couple of months, really, that's when Natalie showed up in my life. And that's when my prayers were answered. And that's when her, pray that's when her prayers were answered as well. So you've got to put yourself in position to have your, your prayers answered. So you do that by consistently aligning your thoughts, your words, and your actions. And when you do that, because I've seen it with so many members of the GPS for Love community, those that I've worked with individually and those who I haven't worked with who've been following some of the things I've been sharing over the years, who have made the necessary changes, that when they align their thoughts, words, and actions, that's when the love of their life magically shows up. And when you do that, I am 100 convinced that that's what's gonna happen for you as well. Because again, God universe doesn't arbitrarily pick and choose. And, and I truly believe, because I know some of you out there, you know, this is the story you tell yourself. Well, what if it's just not meant to be for me? Like, what if I'm supposed to be single? And there's my truth. I don't think the universe, God, divine source, whatever you call it, would put a desire in your heart if you weren't meant to experience it in one way or another. So I don't believe you would have a desire to share your life with someone special. Like I've met, you know, some women who have said, you know what, my career is more important and that's where my focus is. And I don't desire to be married. Or I've met some, some couples who said, you know what, we want to travel. We want to see the world. And our desire is to not have children. See, I don't believe that the universe would put a desire in your heart if you were not meant to experience it. And I believe when you have a desire, that's that internal guidance system saying, you know what, go for it. But what happens is our fears, our limiting beliefs, our stuff, our unconscious shit, if you may, stops us from aligning our thoughts, our words, and our, and our energy, our actions with what it is that we say desire. So when you align yourself with what it is you say you desire, then the universe will fill in the blanks. Not today, not tomorrow, but exactly in the way it needed to show up for you to have the relationship you want. You know, Natalie and I talk all the time and I've shared this story if you haven't heard before. On Natalie's 30th birthday, she was one of those girls, one of those women where when she was younger, she had this idea. You've heard the expression, when man makes plans, God laughs. Well, her plan was that she was going to get married and she was going to have three kids by the time she was 30. Well, Natalie's 30th birthday comes and goes, no man, no marriage, no kids. Okay, so everything she planned for did not happen. She shares the story, we weren't together at the time, that she went out with her friends for her 30th birthday and she cried herself to sleep because she was so devastated that she didn't have what she wanted. But to her credit, she didn't give up. She kept putting herself out there. She kept aligning herself with what it is she desired. And one day she joined Match.com, sent an email to a guy who was me, started a conversation, and then a year later, a little, almost a year, exactly a year later, she was engaged. And as she looks back now, she's like, you know what? I'm so glad that the plan didn't go the way I wanted it to go because I wasn't ready for it. I had to experience a lot of things as a single person so that I can close that chapter of my life so that I can then move on to the next chapter and experience the love and the relationship that I truly desired. So she now sees that the reason why her prayers weren't being answered is because it wasn't the right time for her. And that's where you have to trust the universe. That's where something called faith comes in. Faith is living in spite of the evidence to the contrary. And I know it's hard. It's one of the biggest things that we struggle with as human beings. So, you know, I wanted to share this with you tonight to help make your journey a little easier. So as always, you know, giving you this information is wonderful, but if you do nothing with it, it's a waste of time. Information without implementation or execution is a waste. So now it's to help you get in alignment with what it is you say you desire. And to do that, I'm gonna ask you to take a little mirror time. You know, that's where you step out of your life as an observer and just get honest, just get real with yourself. And I want you to look back over the past, the past three years, and really ask yourself, have you consistently in your thoughts, words, and actions been in alignment with what it is you say you desire. 
you know, have you been coming from that place where, you know what, I'm an awesome, amazing catch. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to chase a man around. I'm not going to jump into bed with someone when, until I'm ready emotionally. I'm not going to align myself with someone who's not at the level that I am in physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, in all those ways. And have you walked away and walked away quickly when it's clear it's not the man or relationship you desire? And again, it's not a judgment. Just take a little mirror time and, ob and observe your thoughts, your words, and your actions. You know, that's what I did when I got real. It's like, you know what? I'm saying this, but my words and my actions are an exact opposite, op an exact opposition to what it is I say I desire. So take that mirror time, you know, get real with yourself. And say, where has your predominant energy? Now, for those of you listening, I know some of you are stressing out, like, oh, my God. Okay, now I got, like, my thoughts, my words. So I've got to, like, consciously be focused on everything I think, everything I say, or I do. No, not at all. Okay, it's your predominant energy. It's the energy that you operate mostly from. Okay, so you don't have to be perfect. You know, there are still moments, quite honestly, where Natalie and I have those human moments where, the fears come in, the uncertainties come in, but we've been down the road. We've done enough work on ourselves where we're able to sit back and go, wait a minute, this is my mind. This is my ego. What does my heart say? What is my truth? And then we're able to kind of reconnect to that little voice, to that intuition, to that divine energy within to tap into it and ask it for guidance. Um, we're a lot better than we were 16 years ago when, when we got married just because of our journey and as I shared the other day, how we've grown as individuals and as a couple. So this isn't that you have to be perfect, you have to look perfect, you have to say the perfect words, you've got to do everything perfect. It's not about that. Is that your energy and your thoughts, words, and actions consistently need to be in alignment with what it is you say you desire. And when you do, you're, you're gonna start seeing some changes in your life. So take that mirror time, Step out of your life as an observer and get real with yourself and observe. And after you do that, I appreciate it if you can scroll down in the comments below this video and just share what you've learned. Like, just be real, you know, with your sisters and some brothers who are here in the GPS for Love community about where you've been. Where has your predominant energy been? In your thoughts, in your words, and primarily in your actions, because that's been the big one. Have they all consistently been in alignment with what it is you say you desire? Or have there been misalignments? And if so, how that could affect your prayers being answered and why you're not attracting the man you desire and you haven't been finding the love that you're ultimately looking for. So that's a little homework for you. Now I'm gonna, you know, go through these. There's some questions here. I've been focusing on the camera looking, you know, being like trying to connect like right to your heart. Hopefully this does bypasses your brain, goes right to your heart, that part of you that's connected to that bigger source. And so as I'm scrolling through the, the questions here, and again, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and put them in. I'm gonna scroll through, there's a lot here, um, but I'm gonna scroll through. Um, if you can do three things that would mean a lot to me. Number one, as always, if you just like this page. If you haven't liked it already, just please like it. If this is your first time here, welcome, but please like it. Number two is to hit follow. There's a little box next to like that says following, okay? It says follow. If it doesn't say following, that means you're not following us yet. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, when we post things, the way Facebook works is it only goes to a certain number of people. And if you don't follow, you're not gonna receive the posts the feedback, the questions, the comments, everything that we're posting there. And it'll just be easier for you if you do that. And secondly, the more people that follow up, the more people Facebook recognizes as being an authority, as someone who's an influencer, who's doing really cool things out there. And so the more people that follow us, the more people we can ultimately reach. So for those of you who can do that, you know, I greatly appreciate that. And then, you know, those of you, there's an expression, birds of the feather flock together. So. If you're single, you're struggling, you probably have some single friends, family members, colleagues, neighbors. If you feel this can benefit anybody, what we're talking about tonight, simply share it with them. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not telling you they have to follow us, but hey, I was watching this, this really resonated, you might like it. 
what I found in my journey talking about energy and attraction, when people tell me, you know what, you should do this or you should do that. And I go look at it and I go read it or I go watch it. I'm like, most of the time I'm like, I don't get it. Does it resonate with me? But when somebody says, you know what, I was reading this and that really resonated with me. If very often there's a part of me or I was watching this, it's like, oh, really? Tell me about it. Or I'll find the link and I'll, I'll click on it. And when the person talks, I'm like, wow, this really resonates with me. Because again, that's that whole energy thing. So it's not about forcing. It's about you consistently operating at the level you want to operate energetically. And then the God will, God, universe, divine soul, will send you whatever you need. So if it's a video for me, if it's something on a TV show, if it's a song on the radio, I can't tell you how many times I, I see signs in my life that I know is God, universe, divine source, guiding me, telling me, okay, you know what? You're struggling with this, but you know what? I've got your back. You're on the right track. Or you know what? Do this. Or, you know, I, there's so many, I, I can't even list them all for you. But I promise you is that when you're living in that way and you're paying attention, you're going to start noticing things and you start seeing things changing around and you're starting to see that, you know, God in the universe has your back. So that's really my goal. That's really my intention for you. So if you can do those three things, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, as we're doing this, I'm going to try and scroll down. All right. So let's see here. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, uh, okay, I don't see any, man, I, uh, I want it amazing. I'm done with that. Corrine says, I'm done with that. Good for you, Corrine. You deserve better. All right, so let's see. I must be saying my conscious I am alone because that's what I am perpetuating. What do I say to myself so that I can believe the opposite? Okay, beautiful. So this is from Gail. And see, you can't BS yourself. So if you're alone and you feel alone, you have to start off by acknowledging that. I hate these people say, you know, you're alone. Just, just sit in the corner and go, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Okay? That's called an inner conflict. So you have to first acknowledge the truth. So the truth is, I feel alone. So it's okay. That's your truth. You feel alone. Now, once you feel alone, it's like, how do you want to feel? So focus on how you want to feel. So imagine you weren't alone and then envision what that would look like, what that would feel like. See, now you're thinking about that. You're going to start talking like that. Like, I don't have a good man yet, but he's on his way. That's exactly what Natalie did. And she was, and she's like, you know what? I don't have that good man yet. And so she trained her unconscious mind to know that it was coming. And the universe goes, okay, I got you. You believe that the energy you're thinking at, the energy you're speaking at, and then the energy that she was acting at, she didn't just sit home. She then put herself out there. She went on dates. She joined match.com when a friend said, you know what? You should try that. And initially she said, no, I don't want to try. But then she's like, you know what? I hate the bars. There's no other place. What have I got to lose? And then she took that leap of faith. She took action that was in alignment with what she desired. And she met me on her free trial. You know, so I'm not saying that you're going to meet the love of your life on, on your free trial, but that's how quickly it happened for her. For me, took, I went on match in the end of June and I met Natalie in September. Okay, so three, four months. But I dated a girl for five weeks in the midst of that went on a bunch of other dates. So again, it'll happen for you the way it'll happen for you. Don't compare to everybody else. Don't compare to me. Don't compare to Natalie because you're you and the universe will do what it needs to do to support you. So that's my recommendation, Gail, is to just sit back and to first acknowledge where you, where you are now and then say, okay, where do I want to be? How do I want to feel? And then start focusing your mind, your thoughts, and your actions in alignment with what it is you say you desire. Biggest mistake people make is they watch The Secret and they go, well, I'm going to put up a vision board and, you know, or, and that's where, why prayers don't work. It's okay, I'm going to pray to God, but then afterwards I'm going to say, you know what, men suck. I hate being single. You can't trust men. They're all cheats. They're all dogs, right? And God says, okay, you said your prayer for five minutes, but everything you think, say, or do after that tells me that you're not in alignment with what you say, what it is you say you desire. So therefore, I can't send it to you. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's see here. Okay, Corrine, I'm done with that. Good for you. Short, no way. I, I misunderstood. Been single for years. Do not date at all because nobody is good enough. Okay, well, again, it's a matter of finding that one person. So instead of finding, because see, if you're saying 
nobody is good enough what your words okay your thought is nobody's good enough your words are nobody's good enough and usually when you think nobody's good enough and you say nobody's good enough usually the actions back that up okay and it's really hard to put yourself out there and go on another date and to be fully open when you believe what the hell it's just going to suck anyway so something you might want to look at important all three areas need to be in alignment so instead of saying nobody's good enough i'm committed to finding the one man who is good enough for me now you're telling the universe doesn't make a difference about all those boys or about those guys who aren't right send me that one guy i'm ready i'm waiting i'm over here it's like the guy you know at the airport with the sticks <laughs> you know like here bring them in bring them in bring them in that's the energy you need to be at Okay, if you're there, there's no good ones, to, you know, the bitch and moan club. And I'm saying you're in the bitch and moan club, but it happens for so many women. I see it all the time. There's no good men out there. You can't trust them. They only want to get laid. They do this. They do that. Uh, well, I've been screwed over. You don't know what's happened to me. And I'm not, I'm not denying that there are boys. I'll be the first to admit it. I'm, I'm the first one leading a boy train saying, stay away from these guys. Run. Roadrunner. Beep, beep. Shh. Cloud of dust. Get away. But. There's also a lot of good men who are just as frustrated finding that special, amazing woman like you. And so your job is to continue to put yourself out there in your thoughts, your words, and your actions in a way that feels good, that's in alignment with what it is you say you desire. So just a little tidbit, things that I see. Again, you might go, Joe, you don't know your ass from a hole in the ground. I don't believe you. It's, it's just how it is for me. Okay. I respect that. I don't, I'm not one of these people who says my way is the right way or I know everything. I'm just giving you my experience and my two cents because you did come here. <laughs> All right. Uh, to, how about if some, Yenny says, how about if someone seems great, but there's an age gap? Now, Yenny, that's what you get to decide because it's a matter of, is this person giving you the love that you desire in your heart? And I believe age has no boundaries. Age has no limits. You know, I, uh, my cousin, who, who I'm very close with, married a guy who's 17 years her senior, who, and they've had two kids together. He's a great guy. He's in great shape. He takes good care of himself. They wound up having kids. He wound up retiring. They're both in the educational system. Uh, he put in his time. He was able to retire early. And he plays Mr. Mom while my cousin go, went back to school to teach and they have a relationship that works for them. So I don't believe there's an age gap or an age difference when two people are meant to be, each, be with each other and they give each other what each other needs in that experience, in that relationship. Usually I find from my experience and what I've observed is that when there's an age gap, there's other gaps as well. So it's a maturity gap. It's because men and women do mature differently. There's, there's plenty of science to to prove that um it's a, a lifestyle gap there's a religious gap there's a social activity gap there's usually some kind of other gap as well so i don't find that usually just because age that is the only gap although that does happen for some people just you know when you're on this earth for 50 years versus 30 you've experienced a lot more that's just the way it is that doesn't mean that you can't have a happy and fulfilling relationship. And again, that's different for each one. So Yanni, hopefully that helped you out. If not, you can go ahead and just, you know, put whatever question in so I can re-clarify that. Okay, Susan. Yes, consistent thoughts, words, and actions along with your energy and alignment will bring you what you truly des you desire. Joe, this is powerful information. Well, thank you, Su Susan. I'm glad that helped. Uh, I'm concerned that because I feel so happy, the universe will think I'm so happy alone. So I'll keep, keep it that way, keep her that way. Okay, again, this is why I love this forum, because we can shine light. Now, let's say, this is how I see you. I see the universe, God, as like the parent who wants the best for its child. So if you say to your child, okay, you're happy, but you, you want to experience more, are you going to say, you know what? No, you're done. Again, that's not how I see it. If the universe knows that you want to be happier, and your thoughts, words, and actions are in alignment with you being happier, then the universe goes, sure, you can have it. That's why some of the people, if you study how they live their life, they've got it all. Because their thoughts, words, and actions in every area of their life are exactly with what they want. 
versus some people who are at, you know here in one level of their life, okay? They got these great, maybe amazing careers, amazing relationships. They're in you know phenomenal um, physical health. But in other areas of their life, they struggle. That's just the way it is because it's energy. And where they're succeeding, their energy is in line with what they want. Where it's not, it's because there's a mismatch. So that's what I believe, Gail. So, you know, again, that's just my two cents and you can do with it what you may. Okay. All right. Hey, Jess, how are you? Okay. Good to see you. So my good friend Jess is here. I haven't contact with him in a while, so I'll be transparent about that. Just life's been, so here's my commitment, Jess. Let's connect and, and just reconnect. Okay. So I'm trying to read. I apologize. I'm trying to read and do all this. This, this is kind of new to me. All right, Kareen, I truly believe Miss Joe, and I'm holding out for the right man no matter what. Beautiful. Great for you, Kareen. And I am convinced that if you do hold out for that great man and you align your thoughts, words, and actions, there will come a day where we'll have a conversation. You go, you know what? I found it. That's one of the greatest things about what I get to do is when I hear very often the client that I've worked with say, you know what, Joe? You're right. You told me it. I didn't believe it, but now I'm experiencing it. And it's everything you said it was. And in those moments, I don't sit back and go, ha ha, look at me. I told you so. Because I really, I don't get off on this. My ego is in check when it comes to this. But what really makes me smile is knowing that woman is finally, or that man is finally being able to be loved the way they desire to be loved. And more importantly, if she hasn't had children or if she currently has children, that she can share what she's learned on her journey so her children don't have to suffer and go through the shit that she's gone through. You know, Natalie and I joke all the time with our kids is that hopefully if we teach them right and share what we've learned on our journey, that they're not going to have to make a lot of the mistakes that we've made in our relationships. And that's really one of the reasons that drives me is not just for you, but if you haven't had children yet, or if you do have children, also you'll be able to share what you've learned with your children so that they can create their lives, the results that they want especially in their love life, much easier without a lot of the expensive learning lessons that we've all made. Okay, so, all right, any so true, all right. Candace, wow, looking forward to seeing the energy chart. Okay, I constantly thought so. I have not dated in years. Recently, I had a few first dates. I'm holding out for Mr. Wright. Okay, bet this is all true. We attract who we are. Love this lecture. Great, appreciate that, Bet. Thank you so much for showing. Okay, Candace, I've been praying for good men who are not good for me. Okay, it's something you might want to look at, Candace. I'm a big believer in releasing someone with love where I love you enough to go on your journey, but I'm not going to allow you to bring me down if you're not going to love me the way I desire to be loved. So let them go on their journey, release them with love, but don't invest your time and your energy with someone who doesn't love you at the level you truly desire. Okay, I've been praying. Uh, I guess I just keep telling my same old stories. Well, realization is the first step towards rehabilitation. Now, if you're realizing you keep telling yourself this, you, you have the same old story, you got to change the stories. You know, again, Tony Robbins, one of my mentors says, the only reason you don't have what you desire in your life is the story you tell yourself as to why you can't have it. So I don't believe that's 100% true all the time, but I believe for most of us, it's true a lot of the time. You know, it's like, I'm fat because my parents were fat. I'm fat because of this. So I'm I'm not successful because I'm a millennial or blah, 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 or I didn't go to school or, you know, my parents didn't love me, whatever. It's the story that, because that story is where we focus our energy, our thoughts, our words, and ultimately our action. So you've got to have an empowering story, one that lifts you up, one that empowers you to help you create the result you desire and deserve. All right. So Sheena, I know I haven't found this person because for a long time I didn't feel worthy, not so much now, but still little. Again, Huge. When you feel you're not worthy, what kind of thoughts you're going to have? What kind of words you're going to have? But more importantly, what kind of actions? If you see, and it's one of the things I see all the time in the GPS for Love community, I can tell a tremendous amount by a woman by the by the past three relationships she's had. Okay, when you feel worthy, it's kind of like like Char said. You know what? I've got a lot to offer. I'm not going to settle. And if you don't love me the way I desire and deserve to be loved then I'm not going to invest my time with you. When you can be in that space that I'm worthy of a good man and a good relationship and you're willing to walk away from the crumbs and not settle, that's when you put yourself in position to get your prayer answered. So that's something 
uh, who is that, Shina, that you really want to look at, okay? And if you don't feel worthy, that's okay. Don't go sit in your room and go, I feel worthy, I feel worthy, I feel worthy, because you're bullshitting yourself, okay? It's another thing that drives me crazy about the law of attraction, people. Go, you haven't felt worthy for 30, 40, 50 years. Now go sit in a room and go, I feel worthy, I feel worthy, I feel. That feels great for five minutes. But you have these unconscious beliefs, these weeds in, in your unconscious mind that says you're not worthy. And you're, when it comes to human behavior, the unconscious mind drives the boat 96 to 98% of the time. So we're all running around on autopilot and we don't even realize it. So the good news, Gina, is that you're aware of it. So that's something you really want to work on. And just retrain yourself until you do feel worthy. And that's really not that difficult once you understand how to do it. Okay, Susan, I was reminded that I need to be clear about what I truly want in my love life, then I need to get my thoughts, words, higher vibration, energy, and actions in line with what I truly desire and not settle for less than I deserve. Awesome. That, that's it. That right there is the whole game. Now, the key, it's simple but not easy because we're human. We have minds. We have egos. We have fears. We have doubts. Okay. All right. Kareen says, you've been my go-to guy in my most recent decisions regarding my dating life in the past month. So much thanks. Well, Kareen, thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to acknowledge you. You're taking the advice if it resonates and you're acting on it. And that's why you're going to get the results. So I can't take all the credit. You know, I just am trying to shine the light for you to make it a little easier, but you're doing the action. Okay. Okay. Um, I've experienced it. I've experienced religion and lifestyle gap. Again, something to look at, something that happened for me on my journey. The things that I was taught in my beliefs, in my religious system, didn't really resonate with my heart, my truth. And I went to find what my truth was and, and to find vehicles that resonated with me and who I wanted to live and how I thought my true authentic self is supposed to show up in this thing called life. Okay. How do you make yourself feel like the next guy you talk to is not going to ghost on you? That's why I hate dating. Okay, again, there's an unconscious fear. If you're going into it, like you're going to go ghost on me and you're thinking that, you're going to operate from that. You're going to hold back. You're going to not be vulnerable. You're going to be afraid. Whatever, however, it's going to show up for you. And that guy's going to pick up on that. Okay, so you're either going to attract guys who re reaffirm what you say because it's like, okay, well, he's going to go ghost. So the universe goes, you're right. We'll send you a guy who goes ghost. And you go, see, I knew it. Okay, so that's one of the things that's going to happen. Or you're going to attract a guy who wants to give you the relationship you want, but he's like, you know what? You're not at that level. You're not willing to be open. You're not really willing to be vulnerable. You're not willing to be 100% fully in. Even though you say you are, there's a part of you unconsciously that's not. And he's going to pick up on that, and he's going to run away. And, or he's going to just get frustrated, and he'll stay for a little while and then realize that, you know what? There's something going on that's really preventing you from opening. So, all right. So that's, that will help you with that, hopefully. Okay. So you can't worry about, you know, look, I married 16 years. Is it possible that my wife can wake up tomorrow morning and serve me divorce papers? Possible. Okay. Do I worry about it? No, because I know that if she does, and I don't say this in a way that is really like arrogant, but it's more a belief in who I am and how I show up in her life that if she thinks she's going to find somebody who's going to love her better than me, then my philosophy is don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Now, would I be upset? Absolutely. But that's also what makes me make sure that I continue to raise my game and be the best husband, the best partner, the best parent, co-parent with her, because I don't want to give her any reason to start looking elsewhere. You know, that's what I talked about the other day is that I'm committed to my growth and to her growth and being at that level. That's why Friday we had date night, okay? Because I don't want her to say, you know what? He neglects me. He doesn't spend time. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't make me a priority. He doesn't honor my feelings. He doesn't respect me. I take away all the excuses from her. I believe I do. And so that's what you have to believe is you can't worry about that. If you're showing up and you're being the best you you can be and somebody doesn't want you, then they're either not the right person for you or they're just an idiot. You know, and there are a lot of guys out there who are idiots who don't know how to appreciate good, amazing women because they're superficial and they expect them to be 36, 24, 36 when they're 52, 86, 95, okay? I, you know, it's, we won't get into that, but 
their energy is not in alignment with the partner that they say they want. I see a lot of these fat slobs, and I'll just be honest, you know, who like, you know, I want a girl who's 26, who's, you know, 26 years old, who looks like a, a you know, a supermodel. And meanwhile, the guy's a sloth. Okay. Again, bad energy. The universe goes, how the hell do you want someone who looks like that when you're a sloth? Okay. Who's going to be attracted to that? No woman's going to be attracted to that. Who's like that? That's why the beauty is you have to just be who you want and attract a like-minded partner. All right, Kansas Joe, you are amazing. Uh, let's see. All right, let's listen to the replay and write down several things you said. It really hit home. Thank you. I dated. Okay, that looks like it's that. So I think we got through it all. Um, but went a little longer than we planned on tonight, but that's the commitment here at GPS for Love. So as always, I want to thank you for being here, for showing up. If you can go and do those three things like I asked you to, is, you know, is to go take that mirror time, do a little analysis and see where your thoughts, words, and energy have not been in alignment with what it is you say you desire, and then share what you've learned. Again, the reason we share is so everybody says, oh, you know what, you're just like me, or you know what, I have that same thing. That's how we build a community here. And that's really intention is for you to not feel alone, to understand that you're with like-minded individuals who are going through the same thing in life, who have the same struggles, the same challenges. And so we can all work together and support each other because when one person wins, if one person can do it, that makes it then possible for the next. So there's a reason for all this madness, the reason for, for what I'm asking you to do. And the third thing is to like, follow, and share. Now, I will say, if you're at that point in your, in your love life where you're struggling, and you're just like, you know what, Joe, I think I'm doing it right, or I'm not doing it right, something's off, I can't put my finger on it, I don't wanna keep struggling, I don't wanna keep wasting precious time, I don't wanna keep, you know, I have this pattern of getting involved with the wrong guys, and you're really, really struggling, and you want help, okay? What I'm gonna ask you to do is if you want that help, simply reach out to Natalie, send Natalie an email, it says, at, and her email address is natalie at gpsforlove.com. And just say, Natalie, I'd like help. That's all you need to say is, Natalie, I'd, I'd like help. And Natalie will, will start a conversation with you to see how we can best help you, okay? Because one of the reasons I created, one of the reasons I left my career in chiropractic is that I struggled for 14 freaking years, okay? Trying to find the love that I was looking for made some really bad choices and decisions, choices and decisions that I thought were right in that moment, but ultimately realized which were really, really bad choices. And I made a lot of expensive learning lessons and I learned a lot of things the hard way. Fortunately, because I'm stubborn, I was able to figure it out. But I don't want you to learn the hard way. I don't want you to waste 14 years. You know, it breaks my heart, a conversation with someone the other day who, who's in a crappy marriage for 29 years, 29 freaking years. And she stayed simply because she was afraid to leave. That was the only reason she stayed. And she wasted almost three And she realized that within the first two years of being married, that she was with the wrong guy. But she stayed. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to have that love that lights you up so that when your time comes for your transmission, you can say, you know what? How blessed I was to have that amazing man and that amazing relationship. And so if you want help and you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. Simply send Natalie an email that's at, at natalie at gpsforlove.com saying, Natalie, I'd like some help. And that's it. Natalie will reach out to you and we'll start the conversation to see how we can best support and assist you on your journey. Okay? So that being said, one more time before we go, hit all those likes because I love seeing those. It really energizes me. And just know from the bottom of my heart how much I appreciate you for being part of the GPS for Love community how much I want to acknowledge you for showing up and being here. I know there's so many places you could have been tonight, but the fact that you're here and showing up speaks volumes to me about you and your commitment to having that love you desire and deserve. And I am very confident that if you continue on the road that you're on, make the necessary adjustments and tweaks, that it will just, just be a matter of time before, before you find that relationship that you desire and deserve. Until then, know is an honor and privilege to be with you. I'll see you next time. Much love.